everyone. It's Wednesday, so that means we're going to do a fun fold card and wait till you see how interesting this fun fold is. Before we get started, though, today, I wanted to talk to you about an idea that I had that so many of us just need to get in some stamping time, but sometimes we don't know what to do. So I'm thinking about hosting a mystery stamping event. And if you think you're interested, please send me your email because I'm going to be mailing out um, an email with all the information that you need to do the mystery stamping event. It'll be a live event. You can follow right along and everyone will be making cards at the same time. Hope you can join us. Please let me know if you're interested um, and I'll be talking about it again Friday. So let's get started now. So look at this very interesting fun fold card we have today. It's actually made up of all of the cardstock. We're going to take the cardstock and cut a chunk out of here and then we'll turn that into a tag. I think it's a really pretty card and I love the fact that um, we've used the centerpiece. We didn't just throw it away. If this is your first time here, thank you for coming. My name is Virginia Kilmore. And I'm going to be showing you how to make this card today. Um, as I said in the intro, we want to try to do a mystery stamping event. And I'll try to fill you in a little bit about it as we go along today. But let's get started with the card. All the measurements and supplies you'll need are here. I did notice that this piece right here is not in it. And it's just um, a piece of four by five and a quarter quarter very vanilla cardstock that you're going to need. So you can add that to the list if by any chance you didn't, um, you're wondering where that came from. So to start out, we are going to start with a four and a quarter by 11 piece of cardstock. So it's a little different than you're used to seeing, um, but it is just the same as we always end up. It's always half a piece of cardstock. And I'm going to pull out my uh, Stampin' Cutter because it makes it so easy to do your measuring and cutting all at the same time. Now, since I'm going to be scoring, I'm going to pull my scoring blade up to the top because I have a tendency to just score it instead of cut, uh, to just cut it instead of score it. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure five and a half because I want to go ahead and score that right down the middle. And I can go ahead and fold that if I like, uh, making sure I have it the way I want it. I'm going to lop off now two inches and then one and a half inch. So I'm going to flip this this way. And that should leave me a two inch piece to build my card. So two inches and one and a half. I don't know if you notice my tape across here. I get very confused by measurements. So I covered up all the metric measurements because they make it hard for me to uh, understand what I'm doing. So I, that's why that tape is there. Some of you have asked me. So what I'm gonna do now is this piece will be the piece that goes across the bottom. Of course, that's the fold. And the two inch piece is gonna get turned into a tag. So I am going to get my delightful tag punch right over here and just slide this in. I do have to open it. And it's just going to make a nice little tag for me to put on my card. I can throw that away. Um, and now I need my two pieces of designer series paper, and it can be anything that coordinates with your paper. Um, I chose Gilded Autumn, and I have two pieces right here. So this piece is going, of course, on that strip, and this is going up top here. I love how this pattern is all tousled so that you can't really put the cardstock upside down. Um, there really is no right or wrong way. It's designed 
so that any direction you cut it, it's still a beautiful piece of cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and glue this here. I like to use my punches sometimes to weigh things down. So I'm going to go ahead and just put these two over here with my tag topper punch and I'm going to work on this. So to get these little pieces, I am going to use a scrap piece of the Gilded Autumn Designer Series paper and my punches, my autumn punches that you can order. They're a trio of punches. They're a great value. Um, and I love the fact that I can see what I'm punching out. There you go. Got the first one. Uh, the acorn probably is the next one because I think I can reach up in there. I just need to get it framed properly. And that's the beauty of these punches that you flip over. A lot of people want to use the punches this way, but it's designed to use to be used that way. Now the last one I want is this one. And it's a little bit difficult to get to. I can't quite get to it. So I'm going to lop off a little bit of this paper and see if that'll help. If not, I may have to trim up. Um, I think I'm going to cut right here too. I think that should do it for me. So sometimes you're going to have to make some slight adjustments if you're trying to punch out something from the paper. And I was looking, both sides of this are really pretty. Even the, um, you know, the colored um, side with all the coppery paper on it. Just as pretty as the front of it. So now we need to do our little um, sentiment. And so I am going to stamp on a scrap piece of designer series paper. No, with very vanilla paper. I have designer series paper on my mind for some reason. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp on my very vanilla. And then use my punch to punch it out. But I am going to close my pad because ink seems to just draw clean paper. And I'm just going to try to target it for a little bit lower in my my card it's not going to be centered like it usually is okay so that's all set we can just set that aside i'm using the sentiment for love of leaves for this one it says your french is is something I know I can count on. I have so many friends like that that are just wonderful people. I'm so blessed to have them in my life. My life. So I'm going to tilt it. I, I'm actually thinking about tilting it this way. You see how when you look at your work from before, sometimes you make different informed decisions. And now I just got to decide where everything is going to go. I kind of like that kind of combination. Now what I did on these is I used little dimensionals on them, the mini ones, because they really hold up the, the leaves and the acorn without being so big. But I did glue down this one. So I'm going to go ahead and glue down my tag. and glue down my first leaf, which is going to be up in here, and then put my other leaf down here. Let's see, it's popped up so it really stands out, and then my acorn right over here. Okay, so I've got my tag, now I need to put my card together. Now, I could go ahead and attach all of this, but I found it actually better to glue down everything first and then attach my ribbon second because I can actually use a weight to hold it in place. So what I'm going to do is just line everything up where it's supposed to be and carefully put a little bit of glue here and a little bit of glue down here. Not a lot. Notice I don't go to the edges because I am going to tilt it. 
and just make sure that your card is sitting exactly where you want it. And now I can take my weight. Now I probably shouldn't have put decorated it either, but that'll give it a few minutes to go ahead and glue down while I get together my ribbon and my little acorn um, embellishment. I love these trinkets, they are so pretty. They're just a little metal acorn. Now, if you wanted to send this in the mail, I've noticed that people have been taking a little bit of foamy paper and uh, going ahead and putting that over the spot, like a little piece of bubble wrap, just a tiny little square to protect the envelope and the trinket while you use it. Look at how fast that glued right down. I think the hardest part about this is getting uh, this ribbon through the acorn because it tends to unravel quite quickly. So I suggest that you get that ribbon through there as quickly as you can. I think I'm gonna to have to wet it down and retwist it, which only made it worse. I guess I could use a little glue. Never thought about that. That might work. Sort of glued it together and then I'm gonna trim it off anyways. Oh, that worked really good. Just a tiny little dab of glue. And I'm going to first knot off my uh, acorn and I'm going to really knot it off so that it doesn't come loose because I've been noticing with this one it was coming loose. And then I'm going to make my bow and I have a lot more ribbon than I need but because this ribbon moves rather quickly um, I want to be able to tie my bow off and then make adjustments. See, that's way too big. But that's the beauty of having a big piece of ribbon on hand because then you can make adjustments. Now I'm gonna show you one more little trick that I like to do, which is to use a glue dot just directly underneath the bow and the acorn to help secure it all. The acorn's gonna hang down right about there. So I'm going to take a glue dot and my pokey tool and sort of wrap it up a little bit. I sort of roll it. And then I'm just going to tack it right under there trying to secure the ribbon and the acorn so it doesn't flop around. And that just makes it a lot less likely to come apart because that's one thing I noticed when I made my first card is that the, the weight of the acorn actually moves the ribbon around. Now can you see what's missing? Or as I like to sing to my uh, granddaughter, one of these things is not like the other. Do you remember that from Sesame Street? My grandbaby has just started to love Elmo's World. So we watch, I watch a lot of Sesame Street some days when it's just one of those days where she doesn't want to play, she just wants to hang loose. So we'll watch a little Sesame Street together or Elmo's World. So there you have it. There's a really fun fold. I didn't even get to talk to you about mystery stamping, but I'll mention it right now while we're finishing up. Um, mystery stamping will be a live event, which means that you can join me at the time and date that I decide. Um, I will give you a list of items that you need to have on hand and everybody's card will be different. But my instructions will be generic enough that you can make a card right along with me. And it'll be fun, it'll be different, but it'll be uh, something that we can do all together while we stamp. And then what would be really fun is if you took a picture of it and shared it um, on the Facebook post the day I do it. I hope you can join me. I haven't picked a date and a time yet, but um, we'll do soon. And if I don't have your email, you won't be able to get the information beforehand unless I can post it on Facebook. So hope to see you tomorrow at 1. Have a great afternoon, and thanks for joining me.